All right, welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Barry from Moss Spawn and Gun. And today we have another gun gripe episode for you. Um, you know, we really appreciate you guys' support and everything. We do want to say right off the bat that we did attend the rally today at the Georgia State Capitol. Uh, today's Friday, uh, February 8th, and we did attend the uh, rally and we ran into a lot of subscribers there. And we really appreciate y'all's support for showing up. I will post a separate video of footage I took at the rally for those of you those of you that would like to see that footage. It will be posted at a future date, probably in the next two or three days. Uh, what today's gun gripe is, we want to talk about some guns that are predominantly out there still. I mean, we know that a lot of this gun ban situation that's kind of come down the pipeline and all of this fear buying and talks of gun bans has driven the prices on certain guns up. You know, a lot of uh, these guns have become hard to find and, uh, of course, very pricey when you can find them. So we want to talk about guns that are out there and they're predominant, they're easy to get, very cool guns and very functional guns that will serve your needs for defense, hunting, what have you, okay? So we're going to talk basically first about pistols because a lot of people, and of course you will be seeing close-ups of these guns, I realize the camera angle is out a little bit from what you're probably used to. You will see close-ups of these. One of my personal favorites is the Makarov PM. Uh, we actually did just get a recent batch of these in stock. And of course, these are for sale here at Moss. You're welcome to come in and check them out. And it's a Bulgarian surplus Makarov PM, 9x18 Makarov. Now, here's the nice thing about 9x18. The nice thing about 9x18 is that it, the caliber is still predominantly out there. See, everybody's buying up all the common stuff, like 9 mil right. and 45, but you don't see a bunch of people buying in to 9x18. So you can still find the ammo. The mags are still out there, and they're cheap. It is a seven shot single stack, so you are limited to seven shots. But as you'll see uh, in the clips that you should be seeing right now, it is a very controllable gun, very accurate, reliable, utterly dependable, very simple to take care of, and best of all, very inexpensive. So again, these are out there, it's a great gun, and it'll serve your purposes without fail. Barry, why don't you tell them about this? Well, the good old Glock 17, you can still find these now the reason a lot of uh, dealers are raising the price on this particular gun is because it has a 17 shot magazine. So if some kind of legislation was passed, this magazine would be worth, uh, what, $100, $125? Yeah, so, unfortunately. You know, but anyway, this is a Glock 17. These are still widely available. This is the Glock that started it all, the 17 that started in 1986. This is the first Glock that got here was the 17. That's right. One of the most common handguns in the world and beginning now, you know, in the United States to be one of the most common handguns. Of course, Glocks uh, across the board, some Glocks have gone up in price. Some of them have been very expensive and hard to find. But again, this is a quality handgun that you can still find. They're all over the place now and they haven't gone up in price a horrible amount. Here at Moss, they've, you know, standard street price, they're out there, okay? We've got them. So, um, Barry, why don't you well, talk about the new suit? Well, let me add something about the Glock. Now, this, this is the third generation Glock. Now, Glock will refurbish a gun for free, so if you find an old second generation Glock for a real good price, buy it and take it out the Glock and they'll refurbish Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if it's blown in half, they it should warranty it. They'll warranty it. Correct. Now, this is a new little gun we got in. It's a Sig Sauer P250, but it's a 380. Now what they've done, they've made cuts and the, they've lightened this gun everywhere they can. This thing is light as a feather. I would guess this gun weighs maybe 16 ounces. And best of all, it's a 15 shot. 15 double stack. shot magazine double stack. Now you know, if you guys watch our videos, you know that I'm a very big fan of the Bursa Thunder double stack, the Thunder Plus. It's a great gun. It's very controllable. Um, just a wonderful setup, you know, it's double action, single action, it's got plenty of safeties for people that prefer that. Uh, unfortunately, I am sold out of Bursas right now, but I do have the six hour in stock, and it is a wonderful gun. Um, hopefully, I can take one of these out um, here in the near future and do a video with it for you guys, a full review. But, like Barry said, very lightweight, and it's just a very top-notch 380. Of course, you will be seeing close-ups in this gun. Rail. Yeah, Picatinny oh, yeah. rail. So again, there's a lot of new products that are kind of hitting the shelves in some of these gun stores that people don't know about. And this is a great way to get into a good quality gun 
without spending a ton of cash, and you're still getting a high cap gun, well, a standard cap gun in a 15 shot, right. which for many of you, for uh, protection purposes, that's more than adequate, okay? We do want to tell you a little bit also about this new gun right here. This is the Zip 22, okay? It's the, the zip, uh, ZipFactory.com Zip 22. Now, when we were out at SHOT Show, I wanted to try to get my hands on one of these to check it out at media day and to shoot it. I wasn't able to get uh, out on the range in time to fire any shots with these. Um, but basically what it is, uh, as it ships, it's considered a pistol. It's kind of like a 1022 modified action in a polymer in enclosure, a polymer shroud with a steel lining, all right, and it's a really lightweight setup, and it accepts standard 1022 magazines and the neat thing about this setup is that it'll drop on the bottom of a Picatinny rail if you SBR your rifle you have a basically a <coughs> forward grip that fires 22 LR now you can also SBR this and you can get a shoulder stock for this little guy and you got a real lightweight 22 semi-automatic that takes of course they were smart by using standard Ruger 1022 magazines these guns right here can be had for a very reasonable price right now we do have a few in stock for now. You're welcome to come by and check it out. And uh, we'll definitely show you how this thing works. Hopefully we'll be uh, getting out and doing a video on this soon. And you guys can check it out. But a uh, very neat little setup. And of course, it takes 1022 mags, 22 LR. Very slick little rig. And they're available, people. They're out there. That's probably the most unique weapon design I've ever seen. It's, it's, a, it's a conglomeration of a lot of things. It sure is. Uh, but it is, it's, just, it's just amazing just to even look at it. Well, one of the neat things that they've done with this system as well, and, and again, you'll see some close-ups here, is that you know they've taken and basically kept this in the most compact rig that could possibly do. You know, it's basically a bullpup pistol, essentially, is the way this action is set up. And it's just really slick. So, again, you guys should be seeing some videos on this. We're going to move along. Now, a lot of people, you know, of course, have complained about handguns that are hard to find. So, hopefully, that will provide you with some, you know, excellent guns that are still out there. They're predominant. Um, we tried to keep this uh, video a five guns video, but we always end up going over five guns. But just for the sake of uh, consistency, we like to keep the five gun, you know, theme in there just because that's what people are used to. Um, Barry, why don't you show them this little uh, Henry Survival Rifle? Well, the little Henry Survival Rifle, this gun has been made, it was first made by Highlight, <coughs> then it was made by Charter Arms, and that's made by Henry. Mm -hmm. But this was designed as an Air Force Survival Rifle. They've been around for many, many years, probably 30, 40 years. Everything, everything here takes apart and stores in that stock. That's correct. And it, the gun will float, assemble, or in the stock. It'll float. Not forever, but it will float. It will It'll float. float long enough for you to grab it and pull right. it back up out of the water. Uh, you got a seven shot magazine. They make 10 and 15 shot mags. We're out of them right now. But this is a great little gun to pack away in your trunk uh, or in, in the back behind the seat of your pickup truck or whatever. You, and you many always of got a you, 22. Correct. And many of you are budding survivalists. So some of you like the idea of a gun that you can take apart, collapse it down in the stock, put it in a cache, hide it, or keep it in a very you know unpredominant, easy to get to place in your house to where it's it's kind of in sight but not in sight. See the nice thing about this system here is that a lot of people may see this sitting around and not know it's a gun. So that's kind of the neat thing about it. When it's disassembled, it doesn't really look like a gun unless you know what you're looking at. Right. And we do have these in stock. I think I've got about three or four units over there, so we do have these. You got them in and the camo prices, and black. camo and black, and these prices are very very reasonable for this gun. This is a high quality gun, and uh, they're just wonderful setup. For being a takedown, they're very accurate. Uh, Barry, tell them about the 500 uh, availability now. Okay. These 500s have been real hard to get. The only ones we could get were these eight shot uh, Parkerized models with pistol grip. But we have stocks. We've got uh, M4 type stocks that fit on here. But this is your basic gun. If you had this with a pistol grip and a stock, you're set. Absolutely. Uh, the eight shot capacity, seven with three inch magnums. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the heat shield on top. This is a very rugged gun. We probably sold hundreds of these. Absolutely. And you very rarely ever see a problem with one of them. Right. And, and again, people, remember the whole point of this video, what we want to drive home to you, is that these are guns that are both predominantly available and the price is very reasonable. I understand that some of you guys don't want to spend, you know, 
thousands of bucks on an AR. You don't want to spend a thousand bucks on one handgun. These are all options that are still very reasonably priced. I would say most of these options are $500 or less, which is great. You know, you can still get a good quality gun. And, uh, you know, Mossbergs, great shotgun, of course, military contract with the Army in the form of the uh, 590A1. So they are wonderful guns. Parts availability is definitely out there. And uh, for home defense, you can't go wrong with 12 gauge. Put you some number four buck in this thing, and you got you a real nice combination for the house. Now, for some of you, you're wanting a high-power rifle. There's probably people that are watching this video right now, and you're wondering, okay, well, when are you going to talk about the evil black stuff? Well, yeah, we, we do have some of that stuff. But, yeah, a lot of your semi-automatics, like AKs, ARs, right now are going to be very expensive. But I want to talk briefly about that a little bit. Now, part of my reasoning, I was explaining to a gentleman the other day. He was in here. He came into the shop. And he was like, well, Eric, you know, I don't think it's fair that these ARs are just going out the roof and they're costing, you know, 18, 1900 bucks, you know, they're two grand, whatever. You know, I shouldn't have to pay that kind of money to get an effective weapon to protect my family and to have, to be effective in a combat situation. And I explained to that fellow, I said, look, you don't have to have an AR-15 to be effective in a combat situation. There's no such thing as a deadly weapon, only deadly men. All right, and a good example, you know, me and Chad were out at the, the farm the other day. And we had a half-size D28, maybe about, I don't know, 18 inches tall. And we were shooting it, we were hitting it with my Schmidt Rubin. I got a 100-year-old Schmidt Rubin with iron sights, a six-shot mag. And we were hitting that gong like nobody's business at 500 yards with open sights. With iron sights. So don't tell me you need an AR. I mean, don't get me wrong. You have the right to own one. I've got the right to own one. And yeah, I want one, just like anybody wants something like that. But for most of us, an AR, yeah, it's kind of a range toy, they're fun. Yes, it is a very good combat weapon in proper hands. But, however, don't brush aside a good old Milser. This rifle, properly set up and with proper ammo, you can defend yourself with this gun out to easily 800 meters. If you got good eyesight, of course, there's options for scopes on these things. You can scope them, and then you got an even better option. If you're handy and you don't mind doing some glass bedding and some trigger work and installing the scope mount, this can be a viable sniper rifle in the right hands. So remember that it's it's not the weapon that makes you deadly. It's your training and your disposition. So remember that. Now, for some of you that want something a little more streamlined, Barry. Well, this rifle here is a combination of a lot of things that are, that are very nice. It's got a synthetic stock, a tactical bolt handle, it's caliber 308, <coughs> got a nice recoil pad on it. Uh, what sets this gun apart from most sporting rifles is this comes with iron sights. You always want some kind of backup. Even if you had the best scope in the world, you don't want to be caught without any sights. Correct. The stock is uh, it's nicely, it's not bedded, but it's nice free floating. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the muzzle of this gun is already threaded for your suppressor. And it's got the AccuTrigger. Got the AccuTrigger. This gun has every combination that you want, and this gun is under $500. Again, 500 bucks, and the gun, you know, under 500 bucks, the gun's yours. So, you know, this is actually Savage's hog model. They're hog killer. They call it a hog And it's rifle. a modified Model 11. And like I say, for some of you that want a little bit more streamlined of an option, this is definitely something that will work for you. So again, people, don't think that you have to have some kind of crazy semi-automatic rifle to be an effective rifleman. Now we are going to talk about this subject a little more in a future video, like what makes a rifleman? What makes you a rifleman? Right. And we're going to cover that more, but for now, just you know, bear in mind that it's about your training. You know, take the time to learn your weapon system and be proficient in your weapon system. You know, and I guess that would be our gripe today. If there were a gripe to post, that's the gripe. Is that people think you have to have some big, ugly, scary gun to be deadly when that's just not the case? Well, the point Eric was making about using the mill serps at 500 yards, it's not the gun, it's the gunner. And there are very few people that I know with an AR 15 that can hit that target. Very few people. The sights are so coarse on it. And this target was, uh, we measured it was 12 inches across and 20 inches high. And at 500 yards, it looked like a speck on a piece of paper. I mean, right. I don't know how they hit it. I didn't even try. But uh, Chad... Well, let's put it this way. You know, Chad right. Chad was making shots on the target with his M1A, 
And I would say for the amount of hits to miss ratio he was getting with the M1A, I was matching him with the Smith Rubin. Right. And that's a $300 bolt action rifle. I paid 300 bucks for it. I reload my own ammunition, and I've got you know pretty much a long range viable defense rifle. If I need to use that gun to shoot long range, I can. Well, Eric made the point, and so did Chad. <coughs> the target they were shooting at was about one third the size of a human torso. The rounds I was spotting for them, and the rounds that they were missing with it would have hit a human being. They were passing over it by an inch, right. or missing it by a half inch on the left or the right. Yeah, I mean, the misses yeah. that we were posting were not missed by much. No. So, I mean, like, if we had, like, a 24-inch round gong, which we might pick up a 24-inch round gong, so we can group some of those mill serps at that distance, uh, we'll be able to get an idea of, of, you know, how a mill serp, especially a mill serp, you know, an older rifle, a 100-year-old rifle, to see how something like that actually groups and patterns at a long distance with iron sights. Well, they would have scored a lot more hits on the 16-inch gong that they're used to shooting at. Right. Uh, this was a rectangular little silhouette about one-third the size of a human torso. Right. So y'all would have scored a lot more hits on the 16-inch. On the well, yeah. I mean, if it were a human being standing there, right. you know, it would have been pretty much 100% connection rate. Right. Now, the, the thing to, to think about people, you know, these guns that we've laid out for you, these are all excellent guns. You know, in some way or fashion, I own several guns like this at my house. I mean, yeah, I've got some auto 22s in my house. Do I have a Henry? No, but I got a Ruger. So, you know, again, we're going back to our doctrine of like, you know, you're crossing into something that's high powered and reasonable, a good quality handgun that holds a lot of shots, a survival rifle in the form of a 22, and a good shotgun for the house. Those are your, you know, basic, you know, conglomeration of firearms that will round you out quite well. Right, you're covered. Right. You got your carry gun, your hunting gun, and your, and your home defender. That's right. So people, there's still deals out there. I know in the last video, you know, some people kind of gave us a little flack about, you know, how we laid out the issues of supply and demand. And I realize that for some of you, that's a very touchy situation. I know that, you know, right now, times are hard. You know, I know a lot of people are unemployed. There's not, you know, a whole lot of disposable income out there for some of us. I completely understand where some of you guys are coming from, and I can completely relate. But we have to remember that there are options out there that are effective. You just have to be willing to break free from the stigma that you have to have an AK or an AR or some evil black gun in order to be an effective rifleman. You just plainly don't. You can be effective. You just have to understand the limitations of your weapon system and take the time to train and get out <coughs> and shoot. Get off the damn couch and get out there and shoot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's our gripe for the day. And uh, hopefully you guys, you know, glean some info. You know, maybe you didn't know about some of this stuff. Maybe you learned something. Or uh, maybe you have some ideas or subject suggestions that maybe you could send our way that we didn't cover. We'll be happy to read your comments. Of course, feel free to PM us. All right, if you'd like to call me or Barry here at the shop, you can offer your suggestions. You can call us at 770 uh, 692 9326. That is, that is the new uh, YouTube hotline. Yeah, we actually have a YouTube line now right. for the shop. So right. uh, if you'd like to call me or Barry, you're welcome to. Uh, sometimes either one of us, we can't always come to the phone, but we'll be happy to answer your questions. If you feel, feel free to call us, we don't mind talking. And of course, you know, this is a retail establishment that's open, normal, normal business hours. So you can come on by, meet us, talk. Well, I was telling Scrobber today, he's coming to Atlanta, and we're, we're located about three miles from Hartsfield International Airport. So anybody coming to the airport can, can just hop right over here and meet us or whatever you need to do. And I want to uh, say that uh, it's very humbling to have people call and say that they love the videos. And uh, down at the rally today, we, we, we had people coming up to us, getting their picture taken with us, and it was very humbling. Uh, and it's very heartwarming to hear from subscribers. Oh, yeah and uh, especially young subscribers. But anyway, y'all keep up, uh, keep watching the videos and uh, keep supporting us and we're gonna keep going as far as we can with it. Absolutely, and we appreciate you guys watching. And of course, if you guys showed up to the rally today, we appreciate the support and uh, we will be attending more of the rallies. I'm hoping that we can actually uh, talk to the people that put on the rallies and the next one coming up, maybe we can get on the podium and make some statements. Right, we could have today if we'd have contacted them early enough, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't contact them soon enough to actually uh, post any comments at the podium, but hopefully we can get that worked out and maybe have us as a speaker up there. Uh, we did conduct several interviews while we were there. We had a few film crews that were there that talked to us. 
Uh, we have one lady that was with, with the U.S. State, uh, State Senator office that actually, uh, you know, came in and talked to us and conducted some interviews. So she was real happy with our, I guess, statements or whatever. But um, anyway, we appreciate it and expect a video coming soon on the uh, recent rally. It'll be up in a few days once I get it put together. Uh, there were some very good speakers, very motivated people <coughs> that had a lot of good things to say. Uh, a lot of good people showed up. So again, we appreciate the support, and uh, we have more videos in the pipeline, a lot of cool stuff coming. Got it. Y'all have a good one.